There's a lot of signs of hormone chaos. You know, I, I like to start first with some of the symptoms that your cortisol is off. Cortisol is the main stress hormone. So when that's off, some of the symptoms are you feel tired but wired. You're running from task to task. Maybe you have more belly fat. You may have difficulty sleeping, either winding down to fall asleep or you may have interrupted sleep, like you wake up at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. before your time. Or you wake up in the morning and you don't feel restored. And the first thing you're thinking of is, I need some coffee. Those are all signs that your cortisol's off. When it comes to estrogen, what you want with estrogen is this brilliant tango between estrogen and progesterone. So you want the right balance between the two. When you don't have that, when estrogen is either too low or too high, it causes symptoms. If it's too high, it can lead to more fat on your hips and your buttocks. It also can make you depressed, it affects mood. It makes you cystic, so you can make cysts in your breasts, also on your ovaries and your uterus. If it's too low, a lot of women describe brain fog, hot flashes, night sweats, again, difficulty with sleep, but usually because of temperature dysregulation. And it can hugely affect mood. It can give you depression. About 20 to 30% of women are exquisitely sensitive to estrogen. And when estrogen has left the building, they're depressed. They feel flat. They're not as interested in sex. So those are some of the key symptoms with estrogen. Thyroid, on the other hand, is interesting. Your thyroid is one of the biggest endocrine glands in your body, and it controls how fast or how slow you burn calories. So it's a very important one. Pretty much every cell in your body is sensitive to thyroid hormone. It also controls your hair growth and whether hair stays on your head. So women who go through thyropause, where the thyroid starts to slow down, and this affects about 20 times more women than men, will have symptoms like depression. About 20% of women with low thyroid have depression. We also know that it can lead to weight gain and um, hair loss as well as fatigue, like deep fatigue. I developed something called the Gottfried Protocol, which is three steps. The first step is that you make these targeted lifestyle changes. You fill nutritional gaps, which is a basic concept of functional medicine, which is what I practice. The second step is that if your symptoms don't resolve, you take proven botanical therapies. And then the third step is bioidentical hormones, but at the lowest doses and for the shortest duration. So when it comes to your hormones, it's interesting. If you just jump ahead to taking bioidentical hormones, you're not working with the innate intelligence of the body. So the body, you know, when there's an obstacle, when you are running around, you know, with high stress, high perceived stress and cortisol is really high, we know that if you remove obstacles, if you change, you know, how much you're drinking, if you change the foods that you're eating, if you switch to a more paleo style and you know, you're getting more vegetables each day and you're eating clean sources of protein. That makes such a difference in terms of helping you with cortisol. Another bit of good news when it comes to cortisol is that dark chocolate lowers cortisol. It may be my favorite study ever on, on the hormone cortisol. I think one of the most impactful interventions that a woman can make when it comes to balancing hormones is to take on cortisol. And I'm not saying reduce stress. You know, I don't think that actually is effective. It's not how much stress you have, it's how you dance with it. It's how you approach it that really makes a difference. When I went through my mainstream medical training, I didn't learn a lot about cortisol. I mean, I learned that it raises your blood pressure and it raises your blood sugar and it modulates your immune system. But I didn't learn about kind of the everyday stresses that tend to make cortisol too high. And if you're running around high stress for too long, it then can, you can become depleted and have cortisol that's too low. So then you have this bad combination of the two, which is not a good thing. Women who have low cortisol tend to feel depleted. They have low blood pressure. Low blood pressure is not always a good thing. So I think most impactful is to really focus on cortisol. And here's why, because cortisol is in charge of all of your other hormones. And I'm a big fan of finding the small hinges that swing big doors. I like to be super efficient. We don't want our hormones to be some gigantic project. We want to find these small hinges.
cortisol is the small hinge. It is the boss of how much thyroid hormone you make. It's the boss of the estrogen and progesterone balance. It determines how much testosterone you make, which is the hormone not just of having toe curling orgasms, but also vitality and just feeling like you have confidence and agency in the world. Because stress has such a, a gigantic toll on the body. You know, there was research done by Elizabeth Blackburn, who got the Nobel Prize in 2009 for her work on stress among premenopausal women. And here's what she found. She did this research looking at women who had a sick child, a child who was in the intensive care unit at UCSF. And she found, compared to controls, women who had the highest perceived stress were aging about 10 years faster compared to women who had a moderate amount of stress. So this research is really interesting. It shows that there's you know, a decade worth of suffering that can come from high perceived stress. She did it by measuring the telomeres, which are the cute little caps on chromosomes that are a proxy, a marker for longevity, for biological aging as opposed to chronological aging. So we definitely wanna do something about this. And I think one of the best things that you can do when it comes to getting cortisol into the target zone, you know, right-sized, is to hit the pause button and to be really consistent about hitting the pause button. I take this very seriously. And what I would love is for people to come up with their own a la carte menu of how they most love to hit the pause button. <laughs>